welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm just going to walk you through a quick equipment list when it comes to ring. So, you know, what should you do? What should you wear? Why should you wear it? Um, just a couple of examples of what helps me and, and what I recommend for people. So obviously, first and foremost, the tools, which are your running shoes. Like I did not realize how important a good pair of runners were until I wore a good pair and then wore a shit pair. So runners, again, these are expensive. You don't need to spend anything like this. Well, these ones win, but this style of one are very expensive. So do you need to get that? No, but again, if you're someone like me who likes gadgets and likes stuff and technology, then yes, I recommend stuff like this, but you want a solid pair of running shoes, again, you could go in depth with the type of foot that you have, the type of preference that you have, the the um, the rays in the back, etc. But a good pair of running shoes is what you want to have. Again, something that's not for everyday use usually. So it's not like um, you know, it's not got a flat sole. It's got a little bit of cushion. It helps you with movement. So any sort of brand Nike, Asics, Hocker, anything at all. Um, but make sure that they are comfortable and that you actually can run them and they don't affect your shins, you don't affect your ankles, your knees, etc. So really, really important one. Number two is socks. So again, one thing when you do long distances, these become even more important in my opinion. So these are Nike socks. Again, these are specifically for running, but they, I don't know what the name of them are, but they are just really, really thick and really, really comfortable. So the reason why they're so handy on long runs is because when your feet swell, which they will do when you're doing long runs, obviously this becomes a little bit more uncomfortable because obviously your foot is expanding into this. This extra layer of cushion, in my opinion, massively helps with... Uh, your feet so I don't get really touch wood get blisters and I think it's down to the socks that I have I can don't wear ankle socks I think that a higher sock is better and um, again these shoes do have a bit of a cushion in the back which does help but if you do don't wear the right socks I think you will struggle massively with blisters and um, so I highly recommend socks next one that we've got is shorts so my personal preference is Gymshark I always wear Gymshark shorts um, as you can see, the, the badge is actually coming off. And I think these are the seven inch shorts. They do a five inch, a seven inch, and a nine inch. I think these are seven or nine. I'm not about that short, short life just yet. But what you want from a short, short is something that's comfortable. So I've got this shorts in the wash right now, which I've got under shorts, like uh, cycling shorts. Highly, highly recommend them because lads, trust me, if you run long distances, it really gets chafed. So be aware of that. So I do wear undershorts usually when I, I wear normal shorts, but I have got a couple of pairs of Gymshark shorts with them already built in, but they're in the wash. So highly, highly recommend them. Again, something that's comfortable, something that's breathable, something that you're not going to get um, uncomfortable with, not going to, you know, if you're sweating, you want it to be quite comfortable. So yeah, really, really important. The next thing is obviously your diet in the clothing, which is what you wear on your top half. The most important thing, again, this is Gymshark, because that's what I sort of rep, awaiting a um, sponsorship. Breathable. So you want something to be breathable and comfortable. So a lot of the time you see with runners is that you either get too hot or you get too cold. P personal preference and runner's preference that I see online is start off cold than you want to be because your body will naturally start to warm up. So again, if you are doing a run today, for example, it might be 10 degrees outside, I would just wear a top like this because you will warm up over time. If it's a little bit colder, then obviously you can have an underlayer, again, which helps with chafing, nipples, armpits, lats, etc., which I would highly recommend if you're doing long distance runs. Uh, but you want something that's, you know, breathable, it's easy, it's comfortable, it allows you to um, sweat out of and it doesn't retain heat or sweat. So massively important for that. Obviously, that leads into headwear. Again, majority of people I would recommend something on your head. Again, when it's colder and I'm doing the morning runs at like one degree, this becomes a little bit more important. But it's it's for two reasons. Obviously, that's for warmth, but number two is for sweat. So a cap in the, any other circumstance or a woolly hat in a cold circumstance, beneficial because it stops the sweat coming down into your eyes. Obviously, that's the job of your eyebrows and your eyelashes, but when you start to sweat, when you run the long distances, it does get worse and worse. And the last thing that you want during a long run is to get sweat in your eyes because it's just very, very uncomfortable. You see people wearing visors as well, something that I need to invest in. Um, that's for a purpose. One, it's not just for sun. 
it's for wind and it's also to stop sweat getting in your eyes so they become a lot more important as well so yeah they look cool but if you see people wearing them and it's dull outside it's not because of necessarily the sun it's also about the wind which i've taken into consideration as well a couple of things that i haven't got here is water bottle or hydration so Obviously, when you're doing a long run, I wear a hydration vest, and again, it's preference. You can have two bottles in the front, or you can have a camel back in the back, you know, one of them things with a tube. I prefer to have stuff on my back as opposed to stuff on my front. The reason for that is because it jiggles on the front, and I just find it uncomfortable. That's why I don't wear like a free train, where I hold my phone here, don't wear any of that. Just wear a vest so I can put water in the back of it, and that's only for long distance runs anything under over a 10k sorry if it's a 10k i might carry a water bottle or i might do a lap and i might grab something um but nine times out of ten i just don't drink on them on them shorter runs um again going on to like where to carry your stuff the less you carry the better so the only thing that i like to carry really is my car key and it's just the actual fob of the car. And if I'm running, it's my camera, which is uh, a small DJI pocket, which is over there. So they're doing two things that I like to carry. And as I said, I like to carry them in a bag like this. So this is just a waist um, bag, bum bag, fanny pack, whatever you want to call it. And that just stores all of your belongings. Again, I don't really carry my phone because my watch tells me my GPS and all that sort of stuff, which I'll come on to. Um, so if you don't need to carry your phone, don't take it. And again, I would highly recommend running without headphones. Yes, without headphones. So you just get a lot more clarity, you have a good thing. You can also control your breathing, control your pacing, etc. Whereas what I've found in the past is if you're listening to music, it's very easy to run to the, to the rhythm of that song or that music, which can be faster than you want to. So I don't listen to music, don't listen to a podcast, I just get it done. Um, and it's a mental battle, battle every single time. Um, two things to go over in the last two. So number one is a watch or something to track your data. So Apple Watch, Garmin, heart rate strap, whatever it is, you want to be making sure you've got an eye on your pace, you've got an eye on your distance, you've got an eye on your heart rate. They're the main thing. So that's going to dictate the intensity of every single session. If it's intervals, again, pacing becomes more important. If it's an easy run, heart rate should be the focus and getting that at a nice steady heart rate. Obviously, in terms of races, you want to make sure that your scheduled finish time matches the pace that you're running at. Self-explanatory. So you want to make sure that the pace that you're running at right now is going to get you to that race finish in that time that you want. So a wearable is massively important. Again, tracks time, distance, pace, um, and also you can get garments which will provide like a, a route um, if you're doing a long run and you don't know where to go. So I haven't got that feature on this, but Garmin, do do that. And last but not least, if it's dark, a headlamp. Again, self-explanatory, when you're running, you want to be seen. You can wear a reflective gear, but a head torch will help you find what's in front of you so that you don't fall over, i.e. on rocks, branches, anything loose. But again, if you're running on a road or you're running around a park, it just shows people that you're there. So bikers, cars, and other runners and walkers, cyclists especially, because they do not look up. They just constantly look down. So be aware of that sort of stuff on the road. So nice and easy. That's just like a little equipment list that I would recommend when starting running. Um, but again, you'll start to understand more about yourself the more you do it. And the more experience you get, you start to realize what you like, what you prefer, and what you don't like. So yeah, hope you found that helpful. If you did, don't forget to drop this video a like, and I'll catch you in the next one.